On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, we continue looking at the profiling tools in Visual Studio, and Sagar is going to show us how you profile asynchronous code. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green. I'm guest hosting today, filling in for Leslie. I'll be doing this from time to time. It's great to see you all again. And today, my guest is Sagar Shetty. Hey, Sagar, how are you? I'm doing great, Robert. How are you doing? Excellent, excellent. We are continuing our deep dive into the profiling tools. And today, you're going to tell us all about the .NET Async tool, which gives us the ability to profile asynchronous code. Very exciting. Which I think that's interesting because async code works a little bit differently than sync code or regular code or however you want to call it. Yeah, absolutely. So, Robert, I thought it would be a good idea to start with kind of establishing a foundation for what even is asynchronous programming. It's kind of a, a buzzword you hear a lot of the time. And I think a good way to think about it is to use an analogy. But first, kind of at a high level, what asynchronous programming is, the basic idea is you can run multiple tasks simultaneously, and it, there's a few caveats here, so long as the tasks don't depend on each other, and so long as that the tasks don't share the same resources. So let's use an analogy to kind of help simplify this a bit. So I think cooking and baking and, and like being in the kitchen in general is a very popular analogy for asynchronous work. Because let's just say we wanted to make some breakfast and we wanted to say fry some eggs, uh, toast some bread, make some toast, and pour some orange juice. If we go through a quote unquote synchronous workflow, essentially what that would look like is maybe we you know, take out a frying pan, we fry our eggs, we do nothing but just stare at the eggs while they're frying. And then once that's done, we move on to the next task. So maybe we throw some bread in the toaster and make some toast. And then we do nothing while that's toasting. And then once that's done, we pour a glass of orange juice. Right. Obviously we know, you know, if you have any experience cooking that you don't necessarily need to wait on one task to finish before you start another one. So asynchronously, what that might look like is, okay, you take out the frying pan, you, uh, you know, put the eggs in. And then while that's frying, you go ahead and put the bread in the toaster. And then while that's toasting, you just pour the glass of orange juice. And so instead right. of taking 10 minutes, maybe it takes three minutes. So okay. the, and the reason why you can do these things asynchronously in the our analogy is one, tasks don't depend on each other again. So that's point number one. So you don't need fried eggs to make toast. And mm -hmm. two, you're not sharing the same resources. So in the cooking analogy, that would be like, you, you don't need a frying pan to toast bread. You, you need a toaster. So they're, they're using different tools. Sure. So in, at a high level, basically the point is, you don't wanna be sitting around waiting for tasks to finish if, if you don't need to wait on them, right? And computers kind of work the same way. Computers are composed of threads, uh, which are kind of the, the cooks in the kitchen, if you will. And the computers that, you know, even modern computers have you know, hundreds of thousands of operations that they need to execute even a second. So these are complex mathematical comp uh, computations, all sorts of database calls, reading and writing text files, setting up clients, et cetera. And if we were sitting around doing everything synchronously, waiting for one task uh, to finish before starting another one, th things would just never get done, right? And so kind of the big takeaway here is right. that this asynchronous framework and programming um, is very much ingrained in ASP.NET Core and a lot of modern frameworks. And it's for good reason, right? It's because essentially what you're trying to do is increase the throughput of your application and increase the bandwidth of what you're capable of. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of asynchronous programming in a nutshell. And the async tool, uh, which is kind of one of our many tools in the profiling suite, is a tool targeted towards kind of getting a better understanding of asynchronous tasks in your code. Yeah. Is this a new tool? Has it been around a while? So at this point, it's been around for a few months, probably close to a year now. I mean, time flies okay. in, in today's day and age. But uh, it, it is a relatively newer tool. And one thing I'll stress is that it's still very much a work in progress. And I'll allude to some things that we're doing to kind of develop and refine it. So yeah. So is, so is many people's understanding of asynchronous code in the first place. So I guess that works. That matches. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, so, it's pretty uh, easy to asynchronously call a web API. But that's there's more you can do with it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and C Sharp and, and .NET definitely has quite a lot of support um, for for asynchronous. I mean, like I said, it's very much baked into the .NET framework. Uh, we have the async and await keywords, but like you suggested, Robert, it is, it is more than that. It's not just using a few keywords here and there. And hopefully our profiling tool, the async tool, will help you kind of detect and optimize uh, issues with your asynchronous code. Right? Let's see it work. Yeah, so let's just jump straight into VS. So uh, I have a web application here. Shout out, shout out to our colleague, Mark Downey, on the production diagnostics team. Hopefully, we'll be seeing him in a future episode. Uh, but yeah, so we have a, a basic ASP.NET Core web application. 
Um, and so essentially what's happening here is I'll go ahead and launch the profiler summary page. So that as everyone has probably memorized by now, it's kind of the alt F2 shortcut. Mm -hmm. And you know we have our summary page. I have the async tool selected. I also have the CPU usage tool selected. So we've mentioned this in the past, but one concept within the profiler is this idea that you can use multiple tools simultaneously. Right. And hopefully by the end of the demo, I can at least allude to or at least showcase um, a reason why you'd want these two tools in particular paired together. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start this. Um, and so this is going to start. This is going to launch the web application. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and record a CPU profile. So this is also collecting the CPU data um, that Esteban had kind of talked about in an earlier episode. Yeah. If we go back to, in fact, let me grab a URL real quick. So this is essentially how I'm going to generate a payload within this application. So this app is not necessarily meant to be this kind of crazy end-to-end -end experience. It's more just to kind of operate with a few interesting asynchronous functions, which we'll see in a second here, and just give us some data to, to kind of highlight some of the insights that the async tool provides. So I'm just going to spam this. Um, I'll show you what this is doing in a second. But essentially, it's just triggering uh, reading from a text file. Um, and then we're going to stop collection here. So this is going to load. Um, I've actually prepared a data set ahead of time, but that was kind of the workflow of what you do to start this up. Um, so now let's kind of dig into the async tool um, in particular. So we're looking at the support, Robert. We've got you know a couple columns here, and I want to start at the far left with the name column. So we kind of talked about you know at the heart of asynchronous work are kind of different tasks operating simultaneously. And in a lot of other profiling tools, we have this idea of kind of a call stack or kind of a function calling another function calling another function. In the async tool, uh, we have this name column. And each of these nodes co corresponds to a particular task. And these are, you can think of these as task chains, if you will. So task calling other task calling other task. Um, and tasks are generally generated using the async and await keywords um, in, in C Sharp and .NET. Um, so we've got different task chains here. Um, different tasks that are happening. In addition, um, some tasks happen multiple times. So we have a, a count that's kind of keeping track of how many times we saw that task occurring and executing. Uh, in addition to that, we have some timestamps. So we have the start time. So this start time corresponds to the first time we see the very first instance of this particular task occurring. The end time corresponds to when we see the end of the last instance. So there are four versions of this particular task. So this is the end of when the last one ended. And then this total time is not necessarily always the total time elapsed over the course of all four, but just the average time for each given one. So we've got a few high level metrics here. And in general, what's I think interesting with the async tool and the kind of metrics you want to hone in on are count and then total time, because we want to see essentially tasks that are really holding up our, our thread pool and not allowing us to progress uh, further. So either tasks that are happening a lot or tasks that are taking a long time. Um, so if we start to kind of dig into some of these task chains here, um, this one looks interesting because it happens 22 times. And in general, it's, it seems to be taking a bit longer. Um, so let's look into this. And this was also the, the same payload I was generating using the sync over async result task. And so this is the top level node. And now I want to dig into this a little bit more. So first of all, I saw that that task, this top level node, was in general taking more than a lot of other tasks. But when I go into it and see the task it's calling, we see some, some more inf interesting information. So for example, this task.delay is taking way, way, way longer um, than all these other tasks. And so this is something that we would look at. And I'm going to go to the code in a second so we can see exactly where this is in the code. But this is something we could look to potentially optimize because this is taking way longer than other tasks. And odds are, and in this case it is, it's kind of holding up the thread pool a bit. And so and this again, task this is getting in the way. This is the average over the 20 or so times it ran, or the total over the 20? This How is the you, average. Can you tell the individual ones? Maybe one of the 20 took way longer, but all the other ones worked well. Perfect segue, Robert. Th I really appreciate that. So as we, we kind of, yeah, actually, we did, we did. It. So as you dig that. into the nodes, um, you can go into more and more details views. So in this case, we'll keep going into task.delay. And just as you suggest, Robert, we can go into individual instances. Okay. Um, two things I'll call out here. One is we have a bucket. So there's 22 of them. 17 of them are classified as within normal variance. So they were kind of close to the average. And then we have some outliers. Nah. So these outliers might be really interesting, right? If there was one particular example that was that really stood out, uh, we want to look into this a bit more. Uh, of course, we can also see just the normal variances as well. And for each of these individual instances, we can also get all the start time, the end time, and then its total time. 
Right. Um, so so you get all that great times and one of them was horrible and the other 21 were fine. It's just an anomaly, something to look out for, but you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and another thing I'll say, and this is, um, I kind of want to emphasize going back to something I said earlier, this tool is still very much a work in progress and something that you're going to see um, in the next couple of versions, 16 and nine specifically is what we're kind of aiming for, for a few updates is the idea. So, in previous episodes, we've kind of talked about the swim lane up here and you can kind of time filter. And as Esteban mentioned in a previous episode, if you're running multiple tools, so we do have the CPU usage tool up here. If you time filter in that swim lane, it will filter down the time for across all the tools you ran. So in particular, Robert, like let's say you were interested in this particular task delay because it took a lot of time. In the Right now, you'd have to manually kind of find these timestamps and filter that down. In the future in 16.9, when you right click, um, this button's not shown here yet, but we will have like a time filter by by this specific range. So mm -hmm. for this specific task. So then you can be able to then go to say the CPU usage tool and do a deeper dive of, hey, okay, so this one task instance was a bit off. What was going on in the call stack here? Like what functions were being called? What hot paths were being triggered here, right? So then you can do that deeper dive because the async tool is a little bit more surface level, but the CPU usage tool is more that heavy hitter. So that's kind of how our tools are kind of playing together a bit. All right, so kind of last thing I want to talk about here is ultimately going back to code, right? So we talk a lot about with a lot of different profiling tools that at the end of the day, we want to optimize performance and we want to bring you, the user, back to your own source code that you can actually manipulate and change to help optimize performance. So just wanted to show that here. So with the async tool, we've kind of been going through this view. We've kind of seen that this task that delayed task is a bit problematic. It's kind of taking a lot longer than other tasks. Um, Symbols are not being my best friend today. So normally you'd be able to go to source file. I have the code up, so I'll just navigate to the um, the function okay. manually. Kind of going through some of the code here. This was the URL that kind of generated that payload from before. And essentially we kind of come into this particular method, sync over async result. And essentially what's happening every time this is hit is we're reading from a text file. And there is a read text async method here. And I want to go into that because that will be particularly interesting. And now once we go into this particular asynchronous task, we see that there here's the task delay within that asynchronous task. Um, and to be honest, Robert, like this task.delay is sort of a placeholder. You could imagine, I mean, this just as easily could have been some sort of call to a REST API or a database. It's very realistic that some other call could have been here that would take yep. three seconds, five, whatever, however long. Um, and it's important to note that in this case, this task.delay is kind of holding up everything else. So this is kind of written in a synchronous nature. So what you would want here is another await, even if you had your REST API call or whatever. So it's not kind of holding up everything. Um, so in this case, we could delete it. Or if it was some sort of call you actually did need, make sure it's written in an asynchronous way. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of how you go back to source and can kind of play around the async tool. Um, not necessarily for the deep dives per se, but much more about giving you the high level insights to kind of further investigate into your code and kind of point out problematic asynchronous tasks. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So where do you see this tool going in the future? Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely have a lot of plans for it. Um, a lot of designs kind of in the works. Um, like I said, there's some usability things coming into play with being able to filter down by a specific task time ranges so you're not having to manually just sil like guess in the sim lane where a specific millisecond uh, is. Mm -hmm. Additionally, um, I don't know if it fully showed up in VS today, but a lot of the, the task names kind of end with like DLLs and things that are not particularly readable. And a lot of that kind of comes from um, a lack of symbol support, we're working on that. So ready to run symbols and other symbols are going to be more and more supported. That also is kind of in the 16.9 time range I alluded to earlier. Okay. So some increased readability in terms of tasks. Um, and then big picture, we really just want to help visualize these tasks, right? It's tricky because a lot of these tasks are kind of overlapping and running simultaneously. So right now we kind of have this tree grid view, which is pretty popular in the profiler, but we really have, and I don't have any finalized designs to share today, but let's just say we're really interested in kind of making that visual experience a lot more intuitive and, and accessible. So that's kind of where we see the async tool going, at least in the short term. But also like Esteban said, with like the database tool, for example, would love to hear feedback because this is a tool that we still yeah. very much want to polish. And really all of our tools, we'd love to hear feedback because we're very much in a, in a polish mode and want to really refine it. Um, and yeah, if you want to learn more about any of these tools, uh, we'll make sure the docs are linked. Um, yep. 
link you should be seeing now is kind of the, the main homepage. But um, yeah, at that homepage, you'll see individual tool docs, async tool will be among them. So yeah, feel free to give us feedback on the docs too. We'd love to hear. From you. Very cool, very cool. Thanks for showing this to us, this is awesome stuff. It's a very handy tool to have as are all of these profiling tools. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me, Robert, fun as always. All right, uh, we'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox and happy profiling. Happy profiling. Thank you.